Hello friends. This video is for anyone who can learn how to read a voltmeter, weld, and follow simple instructions. You can supplement your income and earn over $100 an hour offering this unique, in-demand refrigeration service. Here's a list of reasons why you should at least investigate this opportunity. For a limited time, the hands-on training is free. And if you can't come for our training here, you can learn at home with our manual and with phone support. There's no EPA certif certification required. There's no competition. To help you grow, we refer customers to you. There are approximately 11 million of these refrigerator systems needing service today and only a handful of qualified technicians across the U.S. This service will lead to 40 million other appliances needing service. There's no 24-7 on call, hot attics, or crawl spaces. There's a minimal startup cost, and this market grows every day, and there is never going to be a better time to get involved than now. The rest of this is a few of our videos that prove there is a desperate need for qualified people who know how to properly troubleshoot and completely repair these refrigeration systems. Don't take my word for it. Contact your local RV service centers. Tell them that you have an RV refrigerator that won't work on electric or LP. I'm confident that most will tell you the cooling unit is no good. Next, ask them if they repair and recharge that cooling unit. I'm confident the answer to that will be no. And what they'll tell you is you need to throw it away and buy a new one. First of all, there are many other things that can cause that symptom. They didn't properly troubleshoot that unit. It just seems, unfortunately, that most in the industry, RV industry, is going to tell you, throw it away and buy a new one. Second, if it is the cooling unit, it can be successfully repaired. For 30 years, we offered a 100% warranty. We now offer a lifetime warranty on the cooling units. If they told you to throw it away and buy a new one, that proves there is a market in your area for this service. You know, don't take our word for it. Call them. After watching this video, I encourage you to check out our website for more information. It's rvrefrigeration.com. Hi, and welcome to Ford's RV Misdiagnosed RV Refrigerators. We'd like to welcome Mike and Ann, and they're going to tell their story of what has happened with their RV refrigerator. So, Mike and Ann, I'm going to turn it over to you and just let you tell your story. Good. Okay, we noticed that our refrigerator was not working and we were planning a trip this week, so we were anxious to get it fixed and took it to our local RV dealer. Um, they tested it and they called us and told us it needed a new cooling unit for $1,350 or a refurbished one for $1,600. We had, the day previously, the day before, we had checked online to try to troubleshoot ourselves. And we saw your videos, and we watched every one of them over and over and over. So when we went to pick up the RV, we were able to ask questions. Good. Um, we asked about the ammonia smell. We asked about the yellow residue. Um, we, you know, they didn't really have any answers for us. They had said they worked on a few of them, but not many. So they just were recommending a new you know, unit. We left there and I picked up my cell phone and we immediately called OnStar and found out your phone number and your address. I called, I spoke with Roger, and I explained to him what was 
happening. Um, and he told us that he would fit us in the next day if we came up there. And that's what we did. We yeah. came up. Um, it turned out to be a heating element. The repair was under $300. And we were able to stay here and go sightseeing while they fixed it. Correct. Um, how did the other technician determine what was wrong? What steps did he take? He actually didn't know how to fix it. He put some wires to reverse the electricity or something like that, but he only had it on there for a half an hour. Right. And the first thing we were told when we got here was it had to be on six to eight hours in order to get a reading. Right. And the best part of the whole the whole day is when we picked it up that morning, the, uh, he had the unit running, and he put his hand up to that heating element, and he said, oh, the heating element's fine. It works real good. And it turns out that's what the problem was, was the heating element. And I thought that was the, the best part of the whole story right there. He says, oh, that heating element, it's super hot. That works real good. And it turns out that's what the problem was. Did they check the burner or anything? I don't know. What, really, they I don't know. On the gas side? I don't know what no, they checked. I don't, I don't, they I don't, they, I don't they never mentioned any of that to us. No, they never they did mention anything. They just said the fan was working. They just said it had no ammonia in it. They said that there was no ammonia in it. Right. It was totally out of ammonia, and that's the reason that it wasn't working. Right. It's working fine now, so. Was there a condensation mm -hmm. drain tube on your unit? Yes, it was broken. It was, it was brittled and it broken off just inside the cover. Okay, was there a plug in the end? It was broken off, yeah. Okay. Um, now we have them like you, <laughs> the hose. The hose, yeah. 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 Like you showed in the video. Do you think you saved money by coming here? Oh, we know we did. We got it down. Definitely saved money. And we got a vacation in the boot. That's awesome. <laughs> a mini vacation. <laughs> If you were traveling, would you search for one of our RVRN members that is on our referral page at our website? Yes. Without a doubt. Good. Okay. Do you think there's a need for an RVRN member in your area? Yes. I just don't think they know enough about these refrigerators and they automatically say a new one. And with that, the warranty, we're only going to get a year warranty. We're here. It's a full two-year warranty on parts and labor. Right. Basically, when uh, our technician worked on the refrigerator, he found that the burner needed cleaned. Uh, the flame is much higher now. Um, the heat element had a crack in it, and it was also the wrong wattage. The condensation drain tube, as they said, was brittle, so we replaced that with the, uh, the see-through hose um, and put a cap in the end. Um, and also, we found that the their mister was in the wrong place. This just proves what we have said that sometimes it's a combination of things. It's not always the cooling unit. It may not be just one thing. Hello friends. Back in 2010, Good Sam's put on uh, the rally in Louisville, Kentucky and asked us to come down and do some seminars on the RV refrigerator. While we were there, we met um, our good friends, Jerry and Nancy, and what I'm going to do is let them just tell the story. So, whichever one. Okay. In 2005, we bought our trailer, uh, fifth wheel, with a 12 cubic foot big refrigerator. Thought it was going to be great. It never really cooled for five years. We lived with that. It would get cool, but not cold. Right. Uh, went to a repair shop there in Virginia Beach. Uh, the technician looked at it, said it was working fine. I knew it wasn't. Uh, got to uh, the manufacturer of the fifth wheel, had them check it. Uh, they had a Norco rep come and told me it was working fine. Uh, then we had the opportunity to attend your seminar, and based on some of the things I heard, I said, you know, my refrigerator's doing that, my refrigerator's doing that. And so, talked to you, uh, found out that you did repair work at your shop, and so we came over from the rally, and your technician found the problem in about four minutes. Uh, 
the crux of it was that the cooling fans in our refrigerator had been wired improperly when it was manufactured and so the fans that are supposed to be cooling, sucking the air in and cooling the back, right. never worked. So I lived with that for six years. Uh, since that was remedied, uh, we've been living in the trailer almost full time, not quite, but almost full time uh, from 2010 to this summer, 2013. And the refrigerator has performed miraculously. Uh, every winter, in our camping, we see minus 20 to minus 25 days. Uh, there in Breckenridge, where we spent the last couple of winters, the temperature, there were some periods where daytime temperatures did not get above zero. Wow. Nighttime temperatures were dropping down into the 20s. The, uh, at, at one point, you called and said that you thought you needed a new refrigerator? Yes. Uh, he said the refrigerator had frozen up and I uh, have since learned that you know it's impossible for it to freeze up. But he said it had frozen up and I would either have to get a new cooling unit or rebuilt unit or buy a new refrigerator. Uh, we have talked to other repair places and it seems that they automatically, rather than saying, okay, we'll work on it, we'll it's their go-to response is, you need to buy a new one. Right. And I checked, you know, my units, like $4,000 plus labor to put it in. Right. That's an expensive proposition. Very expensive. And actually, when you called me over the phone, uh, I was able to help you with a tip to get it going, right? I right. found out there wasn't yep. anything wrong with the refrigerator. No, nope. and uh, got it going, and then three months after that, on our trip back to Virginia Beach from Colorado. We came through here and you checked it out. There was no issue with it. Uh, you know, still running. <laughs> so, saved me a lot of money. And basically, what was wrong with his unit at that time, it was just an airflow issue. As he pointed out, it was below zero. That's the air that was coming in behind the coil. So we needed to restrict the airflow so it could get hot enough to actually create the cooling that it, uh, they were looking for. And uh, it's still working. I mean, those things will last a while if properly taken care of. That's the key right there, yeah. Um, and that's the reason that we're doing the videos and the reason you're doing this, and I sincerely appreciate you doing this, because we're trying to let the RV owners know that you don't have to, because if you have a problem, you don't have to throw it away and buy a new one. Uh, it's just a matter of finding the, the right person that knows how to work on them. It's a matter of having the right tools and the right knowledge and knowing what to do with them. Thanks for watching and GBY Life.